It was really a, a cycle of, of going through guilt and conviction and then uh, you know, having all these desires. And so I'll feed those desires and then crashing down with guilt and conviction again. It was just a roller coaster. Brady Rand was 12 when he was first exposed to pornography. Uh, one of my friends, he had taken a magazine from his dad's collection. And, and even to this day, I can still remember that first image that I looked at. It opened my mind up to a world that I had never been exposed to. And so I, I really wanted to just explore that. Not long after that, Brady and another male friend had their first sexual encounter. We began talking about sex and, and then eventually we did start experimenting with each other. It occurred to me that I should probably talk to somebody about this and um, I, but I never did just out of fear of, uh, you know, what they would think, fear of what my parents would think. After high school, he joined the Navy. I had been stationed in Hawaii. My desires to be with other men really, you know, kind of amped up at that point. And there's a lot of opportunities. Um, there's different bars and there's different hangouts and those kind of things. Brady's promiscuity was always in conflict with his Christian upbringing. God was convicting me during those times and trying to let me know, hey, this isn't the right way. Uh, but after that guilt and, and those convictions would wear off, you know, it'd be more and more difficult to, uh, you know, abstain from those things. Brady was discharged from the service and returned to Oklahoma where he married his high school sweetheart and they had two children. All the while, Brady kept his secret life hidden. I loved my first wife with my whole heart. I uh, believe that, you know, if I married this woman, if I had this woman with me, um, every day of my life, maybe those, maybe that would help, you know, stave off this desire. For many years, Brady was faithful to his wife and stayed active in his church. But in 2006, the couple made plans to celebrate their 10th anniversary. We planned a, an eight day trip to Hawaii and I should have recognized that that was gonna be a trigger for me. Um, it was probably about three or four days into our trip. I went back to that first gay beach that I had gone to um, back whenever I had first moved to Hawaii. And I, I had a hookup with a, a gentleman that I had met on the beach. That trip set Brady back on his old pattern for several more years. I had gone, you know, six years with, without cheating on my wife. I had uh, made this commitment to God that I had now broken. Whenever we got back from our trip, I kind of had this mindset of, I just didn't really care anymore about that and about uh, suppressing that. I had gotten my first desktop computer and, and you know, of course, there, that just opens up a whole new world as far as pornography is concerned. And I did kind of go into this deep hole of pornography and uh, just kind of buried myself in that. I started meeting other men Brady and his wife began attending a different church, despite the fact that her health began deteriorating from diabetes. She wanted to be at church. She knew that she wasn't gonna be here a lot longer and she wanted to make the most of it. Brady's pastor then invited him to attend a conference. I really had reached this point of hopelessness. I would have thoughts of suicide because, just because of that despair and just that guilt that I had felt, I had, really stopped hearing from God and, and I wasn't able uh, to hear uh, his voice anymore. All of a sudden, I felt this desire to go to the conference that, uh, that I needed to be there. And, you know, looking back at that moment, I know that it was God, it was the Holy Spirit. Brady's life changed forever that weekend. I'd never been to a prayer conference and Pastor Corey Jones, um, that was one of his conferences. He's felt led to, um, you know, just bring the church back to praying and, and back to a commitment of, of really crying out uh, to God. And that's what his conference was about. At one point in the conference, Brady felt a hand on his shoulder. I, I connected eyes with the pastor. Within about 25 or 30 seconds, he was standing next to me. And he had his hand on my shoulder and he just said, he had just begun to pray over me. He said that whenever he was sitting there on the stage looking out at the crowd, 
that my face was the only face that he could see, that everything else was kind of blurred out. And God told Pastor Corey, I want you to go and pray that he would be filled with the Spirit. For the first time in my life, I began to feel uh, the manifest presence of, of the Holy Spirit just falling on me. And it was a powerful, powerful thing. And all of that sin, I could literally feel it leaving my body. And it was in that moment that I just began to weep uncontrollably, just tears pouring out of my face. And, and uh, it was um, maybe about 10 seconds later, I realized that sin that I had asked God for 26 years to take out of my life, I could feel that leaving my body and literally leaving my body. And at that point, I began to laugh uncontrollably because I was so happy and I was so excited to finally be free of this. And, you know, I knew that it was authentic. I knew that this was an actual encounter with the Holy Spirit, with God. Brady started being discipled at his church and has never looked back. The freedom that I felt from that encounter with the Holy Spirit was life-changing. I knew that this was forever. It's not just something that I did on my own. Sadly, Brady's first wife passed away in 2014 as a result of complications from her diabetes. Two years later, Brady married Raquel. They now have a blended family of four and are both involved in ministry. If I could say anything to anybody that's struggling today with, with that maybe, maybe suicidal thoughts or maybe just depression or maybe just hopelessness, I want them to know that, that Jesus is real, that Jesus is still in the business of changing people that He cares about you deeply, and there is true freedom that's available to them. Just don't give up on, on hope.